to AWARE. We are dedicated to communicating information that inspires your positive growth and change. Are you interested in a peaceful planet? Are you interested in optimal health? Are you living with purpose? Are you enjoying your life? We realize each person can make a difference, and our mission is to empower your awareness. The choices that you make in every moment shape your life, and we encourage you to realize that you have your own answers and to always listen to your own truth. We invite you to stay aware. Hello and welcome to The Aware Show. I am Lisa Gar. That's me. And I'm very excited about today's show. And by the way, if you don't, for some reason, listen to the entire show on the radio, you can always listen to it on our podcast on demand at any time, wherever you listen to your podcasts, the aware show is what you're listening to, or you can search Lisa Gar because I get to have this great conversation today with a very dear friend. Now I have known this guy 20 something years. I don't even know. And we have been through so much together as the, you know, the hills and mountains that you go through in life. We have gone through this and in, in separate iterations of our lives, we've gone through these great hills and valleys, but somehow we always seem to meet each other on the top of the hill. <laughs> Isn't that right, Chris? Yeah, it's better than the bottom of the hill. I'm just thinking of your bike tumbles and stuff. Oh, like, I'd rather meet you. I'd rather meet you at the top of the hill. <laughs> I've been through that too many times. So yes, Chris Howard is who you're listening to. And he's made such an impact on, on my life, on many people's lives through his incredible curation of the human potential. And that's what Chris teaches. He teaches the ability to, to, not only through life mastery, through wealth mastery, through the mastery of the human language, through many different ways of teaching these territories of how this ultimately ends up in success in our lives. Because if we're not successful in these areas of our lives, health, wealth, relationships, then life starts to fall apart and things start to get very crazy. So Chris has been teaching this masterfully for 25 years. And now he has something extremely new, very exciting to talk about that is really making him wake up every day with the spark in his step because he has integrated, this is really a brilliant move, Chris, AI technology into his teachings. So welcome, hello. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm super happy to uh, talk to you about this and to share with the uh, Pacifica listenership. And, you know, we, I've just got some uh, really uh, great things that have, that, as you said, put a spark in my eye. I'm glad that you see it, you know, but I feel it um, every day because it's just given me a renewed sense of possibility. And I think, uh, and that's my, my goal here today in our conversation is to spread that renewed sense of possibility to everybody listening right now, because, I think new doorways of possibility are opening for us right now. And uh, and it's exciting. The future is exciting. Yes. And that's kind of what you're talking about because you're breaking the chains of all conventional teachings, which you have always been a trendsetter in doing. And this doesn't come without challenges to be a trendsetter, but tell me how you're doing that. How are you blending your techniques with new technologies? Well, essentially what I've done is uh, I, I made myself, uh, like I just in my own head, I thought I'm, everything I do right now, I want to do for the last time. And so I started thinking, okay, well, what do I do? Now, I've been in the field of transformation for, as you say, over 25 years, probably 26, 27. I've probably known you just as long. And, uh, you know, I've got, in that amount of time, we've heard about the 10,000 hour concept that it takes 10,000 hours and something to develop mastery, which equates to about 10 years. Well, I've been doing it for uh, two, and a, two and a half decades, as have mm -hmm. you, you know, you've been on the same path for the, the same amount of time. Yes. So, you know, in that amount of time, you pick up some things. And um, I, you know, my basis was neuro-linguistic programming. We built the largest school in the world, um, hypnosis. And so I started looking at that and going, okay, well, how do I take each one of the pieces? How do I take each one of the techniques, teach it to augmented intelligence? I don't say artificial, it's augmented augmented intelligence, teach it and take like little shards of my personality or fractals of my consciousness and put them in different chat bots, if you will, so that now when I work with people, it's still me working. It's still my intuition that's guiding the whole ship um, and their intuition, obviously, but 
I'm coming with like 30 or 40 super friends at once around the problem. So we can shift things faster than I've ever done before. And I, I would, uh, you know, I, I don't even, I don't even need to, uh, to uh, what do they call that when you pussyfoot, right? What do they call that? Um, what, I don't need to hold back. Along. Let's inch along. Yeah, I don't need to inch, inch along. along. They, yeah. This has never been possible in human history. It's just never been possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, cause when you take the, the concepts of alchemy, you know, the concepts of as above, so below, as within, so without, when you take those types of concepts and then you start to marry it with AI, there's in incredible things that you can do. So taking ancient wisdom and marrying it with the future to me opens up whole new possibilities for us. It's like an instant neural coach. And I love that you call it augmented intelligence because this isn't artificial at all. This is your teachings, your work, your hard. I mean, you've spent decades curating and working with this material and all of your life experience that you've learned right. has come together and then you uploaded it into the super brain, this super brain and explain how you did all that. Well, I mean, it, it, and and I think that's the difference. A lot of people, when they go, oh, artificial intelligence, they think it's just something out there working with their stuff. If a lawyer says, I'm going to use artificial intelligence for your case, it makes you feel like, well, get out of here. What am I paying you for? Right. right. That's the thought that you have. But with this, it's it's no, it's about augmenting intelligence so that we can augment the results we get physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. How did I do it? Well, I mean, you know, I had been working on this before, uh, you know, ChatGPT came out with their GPTs, which are chat bots that you can personally fine tune to do certain things. I had already been doing that before they had brought those in. I had built a bunch of them uh, elsewhere. So I just mapped them all over into ChatGPT and I continue to create. I create every single day. I create more of these. So each one has a specific function. And I found that at least from my perspective, that when you train them, with one function and one function only, you get far superior output out of them. Mm. Like if I have one that just gives you a metaphor that's going to solve your issue, that's mm -hmm. going to get far superior output out of that than if I try to get it to do 15 different tasks. Um, True. Yeah. And so essentially, I just went in and I, I broke down every element of coaching and therapy. What makes a therapeutic situation? You know, when you're looking to shift somebody's consciousness, let's say they're in a poverty consciousness and they want to wind up in a wealth consciousness. Okay, you go, well, what are the elements that would enable somebody to be able to shift their consciousness like that? We need them to have an awareness of where they are. Uh -huh. We need them to have an awareness of where they'd like to be. And if we can build those two out more, that's going to be powerful. And then there's this bridge that they've got to cross to get there. And so there's obviously something they need to learn in order to let go of the poverty consciousness and set into the uh, the new wealth consciousness. Mm -hmm. So however I get them to the learnings that bridge the gap between where they are and where they want to be, I can, uh, I can help to facilitate that transformation. That's just a big picture concept that underlies everything. So if I can... Uh, but, you know, tell you a story or tell you a metaphor or design something with the art, augmented intelligence, uh, design 50 different things with uh, that all bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be. It's fast. It's fast. Mm. I just worked with somebody this morning and she came in to say she was having trouble paying her bills. She was having trouble uh, making her life work. And she was trying to get into a new home. And so what we did was I gathered her information. I worked with and I always get consent for this beforehand. I, and I worked with a couple of, I worked with three different chat bots. And at the end, she was like, oh my God. She said, I feel great. I feel inspired. I feel like I'm going to go out there and do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, it, yeah. It changes the state. And that's ultimately what you want to do is you want to change the state of somebody who's in that poverty consciousness, who's reacting from unconscious patterns in their life they cannot possibly be aware of to a place where they are operating from consciously their patterns actively operating in their life, that yeah. they are co-creating their lives rather than being at the effect of it, they're affecting it. And you can barely, it's hard to do that on your own. It you is. You could sit there and say, oh, wait, I'm running an unconscious pattern right now and it's resulting in this catastrophe. Maybe I should dive into this thing. And I mean, it's- really We try, we try to think our way through it, right? It's like, oh my God, and then we like, but yeah. uh but yeah you can't read the label from the inside of the jar all you can do is look at the results and you hate them and you say yeah. oh, this sucks i have i can't pay my bills i can't do this i'm you know and then you look and you say how do i get out of this and your mind just goes blank and you go back into some coping pattern right and we, like even Ooh. with all the tools in the world we have the potential of doing that anyway 
right? So like, even like I have the potential of doing that. You have everybody in the world yep. has the potential of doing that. That's why we're talking about it. Cause we've been there. <laughs> we're like, yep, done that. Right. Um, didn't work out so well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just knowing this doesn't automatically set you free, but if you embrace it, it can set you free on multiple levels. And this is what excites me about the future, because I think that everybody, as you're listening right now, you have the potential to make your life whatever you want it to be. And you're more capable of doing it the, uh, the, right now than any other time in, in human history. Mm -hmm. Um Yes. I have this little story uh, that I wrote, Lisa, if you want to, uh, is it okay if I read yes. this story? Okay, so I wrote this, and it's called The Journey to the Heart of Augmentation, From Fear to Future with AI. So once upon a time, in a world buzzing with the whispers of change, there lived a person, much like you, standing at the crosswords of fear and fascination. This person, whose story is both unique and universal, found themselves wrestling with the rapid advancements of artificial intelligence, a force as mysterious as it was mighty. In the depth of their contemplation, they encountered a sage, a being of wisdom and warmth, who appeared not in grandeur, but in the simplicity of a passing breeze, whispering insights that would transform the very fabric of their understanding. Imagine, the sage began, seeing AI not as a harbinger of displacement, but as a beacon of augmentation, a partner in the dance of your potential. As the person listened, a seed of curiosity was planted. Every moment you spend fearing AI is a moment you're not harnessing its power to amplify your human ingenuity, the sage continued. Consider the artists who, with the stroke of their brush, bring to life emotions and stories. Now, imagine augmenting that creativity with AI, exploring depths of artistry previously unfathomable. The sage guided them to see AI as a vessel, not as a replacement, but as a, of enhancement. Your fears, they said, stem from not the presence of AI, but the absence of understanding its essence. AI is a mirror reflecting the boundless potential of human intellect when augmented by machine intelligence. As they ventured deeper into this new realm of thought, the person saw examples of AI augmenting human capabilities in ways that were once deemed impossible. Think of the doctors who diagnose diseases with greater precision, educators who personalize learning experiences, and entrepreneurs who uncover insights hidden within data, the sage illustrated, painting a future where AI and human creativity converge to solve the most pressing challenges of our time. With each step forward, the person's fear began to dissolve, replaced by a growing sense of empowerment. They understood that embracing AI was not surrendering to a future controlled by machines, but stepping into a future where machines amplify the best of humanity. As the journey reached its zenith, the sage offered one final piece of wisdom. The future is not a destination to be reached, but a reality to be created, a tapestry woven from the threads of human and artificial intelligence. The person now standing at the threshold of a new era realized that their journey was not just about overcoming fear, but about embracing a partnership with AI, diving into the depths of augmented intelligence to craft a future limited only by the bounds of imagination. And so as you reach the end of this tale, you too may find yourself at the beginning of a journey, poised to explore the vast expanse of potential that lies in the harmonious symphony of human and artificial intelligence. Embrace this partnership and let the future be a canvas for your augmented creativity. So that's really cool. So AI wrote this, right? I wrote it with AI. I yes. taught it how to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, is, yeah. you put in your content over the last 20 years and asked a question and it curated the answers based on your content that you've distributed over 20 years to answer this question. Yeah, it's essentially, so I take a lot of time fine tuning the AI to be able to produce a, a result like that. Sure. I had to teach it hypnotic language. I had to teach it metaphor construction. I had to teach it how to take somebody from a, pl a undesired place to a desired place. Like so an apprentice, but it... <laughs> Yeah, and that's and that's what excites me about because I'm a teacher, and I just thought, well, who's better to teach than me? And so I just I embraced it right away, and started teaching the AI to do these specific tasks. Uh huh. That's fantastic. Yeah. And and so far, we did this work together, which was really great. And so yes, I was looking at an industry that I've been in for a long time with the casting agency that I've owned, and I looked at the changes in the entertainment industry from since COVID with the ability to gather crowds being uh, diminishing right. and um, looking at new ways of doing things. And it really gave me an inspiration to say, okay, look, you're a thought leader. You're a creative person. You found this original way of doing this in the first place. You can create this again. It's all the, it's like the hype that I needed. Yeah. And 
confidence that I needed and the state shift that I needed rather than death, doom, devastation, destruction. I needed really something that was going to get me towards hope, possibility, the future, how I was going to co-create this, that I'm capable enough to do it. And it really did help me. And you went and edited it for me, gave it a title, Know Me, and you were able to bring that to, and I have it up on my computer. It's really oh, great. Awesome. I yeah, I actually should print that and put it on my wall because it's like my hype man every time I walk by it. <laughs> it builds you up. Yeah, I've got one chat bot called the Perfect Coach that we were, you know, we were promoting this all over the place, uh, perfectcoach.ai, and people were going and signing up for it, and you can talk to it. But a lot of my clients were saying that when they were in a, like they're in a lazy place and they need to go out and make cold calls or phone calls or something, they talk to it for like five minutes because you can talk to it on your phone, you can talk... You can talk directly to it. and then they'd be in this inspired state. So it would change yeah. their state. But as you said before, state determines your actions because if you're inspired, you're going to be taking inspired action. I have a thing like that on my wall that I created from AI that is uh, for me too. It's like, uh, uh, here, I'm going to read this. This was Let's for see. me. Let's see this. Let's see this. This was for me. And this was to inspire me. Right. So this is very personal, but it says, imagine waking up in your beautiful house on the cliffs, the oceans roar, a gentle symphony that energizes your soul. It's just tapping into me, right? Yeah. As the founder of a multi-billion dollar empire, harnessing VR, AI, and neurohypnotic transformation, you're not just an entrepreneur, you're a creator channeling divine intelligence to uplift humanity. Your life's mission to tap into your God consciousness and channel boundless love and resources into society aligns perfectly with your top values, building the empire, being an iconic martial artist and making life an epic romantic adventure. Feel the sense of fulfillment as you lose yourself in jujitsu, work with cutting edge technology like chat GPT and travel to far off exotic places. Recall the electrifying moment you led 600 people in song and dance. That's the magnetic force you bring into the world every single day. As you orchestrate transformative retreats and explore the globe with financial freedom, remember, you're not just living your dream life, you're actively creating it. I love it. Yes, absolutely. And pumps me up, man. It <laughs> does. And it's more than that. These are things that you have done. So it's you have look back and you say, okay, well, you had led six or people. I was in those audiences. Oh, I've led much more than that. But that was one specific yes. moment in time that was my favorite. When I go back and I think about it, I was in Mexico. It was my 24th birthday and I was leading this audience in song and dance. So that's what it's referring to. Wow. I remember uh, being in Maui and we were building our boot camp and too, yeah. Natalie Cook and, and John was there and we had this like, Great moment, and Kayla came. It was just, you know, we've had so many great things. And I Wayne mean, Dyer was there. You brought Wayne, Wayne Dyer was there. Yes, yes, that was that was very special. And I mean, you have helped so many people. We've introduced to you a friend of ours, dear friend, who um, is a public school teacher, and she has saved lives with your content. I mean, kids that have just been so down and out that she is literally boosted up because she walks in your talk. And I, you know, I just, you, you got to feel good about that. So let's, oh, our gift. we have a gift for, uh, yes. yes. Oh, so, oh, yeah. okay. So this is a way that you can experience this. And I want you to share with people yeah. how they can have this experience, um, themselves. Yeah. Um, so I'm gifting to the Pacific audience just because we've been, you know, we've been, we've had this relationship for so long. We've been blessed to have uh, raised over a million dollars for the Pacific audiences over time. And so what we want to give uh, as a gift to help people move into the AI in a very profound way, I'm gifted. It's actually a two-part gift. Uh, for the first hundred responders, we're going to give you a set of tickets. So all you have to do is go to the, the website uh, and we're going to give you a set of tickets if you make it in the first hundred. So you, you should go there fast when we- it's, the, oh, so the website's theawareshow.com forward slash Chris. Okay, theawareshow.com forward slash Chris. And forward slash Chris. Now you said a pair of tickets. A pair of tickets. So they're getting two tickets. But, and, nice. and what we're giving you tickets to is insane. So go there fast, right? So what we're giving you tickets to is a program that was priced at $7,500. It's a four-day seminar. We've sold it. Typically, we would discount it to $4,000. So the $4,000 was the normal price that people would pay for this program. But it's called the Millionaire Business Accelerator. And it's AI amplified. So for four days, and it's coming up. Uh, we've got one that's coming up next month. So you're, you're yes. in it, right? The Millionaire right. Business Accelerator. And when you come to this program, you're going to uh, you're going to completely design your dream business in four days. You're going to walk out. You know, in the past, it would have taken me 
uh, like I would teach people how to do it. They'd have to go and build the things that we now right here, we'll get your vision, your mission, your purpose right there. The manifesto for your business. We'll create the branding for your business. We'll create your best values. Self. Wow. Everything that happens in this four days, it's insane. It's like this gift is life transforming and everybody's starting side hustles these days. Everybody's getting out there and wanting to build something entrepreneurial because it's easier to do than ever before, but you got to move fast. You got to be, you got to strike while the iron's hot, grab these tickets, but also we're going to give you a discovery level membership. It's a free level membership, but a discovery level membership to epiclife.ai, which is our platform where you can go in and work with the perfect coach. You can work with the other chat bots to help you when you're not talking to us so that you've got the support that you need to grow your life the way that you want. So oh, that's fantastic. So they get to take it home with them. Great. And, and I've never given advanced courses before. This is 14,000 because you're getting two tickets, $14,000 in value. It's yeah. insane. No, it's like, great. It's, quick. it's a good. Yes. It's, yeah. yes. So please go. These are actually, these are gifts to the first 100 people. So go to the aware show.com forward slash Chris. And so not only has Chris taken his content and his brilliant information from 25 years of, of teaching, it's also Chris. So you're going to be teaching your own personality, bringing yourself into it, doing live Q&A with people. It's a live and it's virtual. So you don't have to go anywhere, right? Virtual live. Right. The I mean, they're going to get me for the four days. And, it, you know, I'm injecting the same intelligence that I used to do $100 million in sales of our seminars around the world. I'm injecting that into your business to help you grow your business. So it's not, uh, we're not passing you off to something. It's like, here I come and I've got 10 of me to help you build at the same time. And we're just going to, and you're going to go, oh my God. And your jaw's going to drop and you're going to walk out and you're going to go, wow. I like, I've waited a lifetime to be this far. And it feels so good because there's so much devastating news out there about economy. But I love what Chris said. Everyone has a side hustle these days because it's easy to create now. So yes, you might have a day job. Yes, you might have a, maybe you even have a, a, company that you've already created, but you want to enhance and make it better. Or maybe you want to start a franchise of something or anything, a coaching business. It's basically you and your story and getting together with Chris in this five, six, seven, three day event, right? This one's actually a four day event. MBA. Four day. Yeah. Okay. And so um, four days and it's online and it's um, the aware show.com forward slash Chris, which is C-H-R-I-S, Chris Howard, Chris. And it's something that we have talked about for a long time. So I just wanted to ask your opinion on this. When you do coach people, when they come to you these days, what kind of excuses are you hearing from people about the economy or the cost of you know inflation these days? I, you know, I, I, I hear the same. I, it's funny, excuses is such a funny word uh, because yeah, I get, I get where you're coming from when you ask that question, right? And it's like, you know, the reality is, I think that the things that you hear, the reasons why they people say they can't succeed or they can't have their life the way they want is pretty much the same as it's always been. It's not, you know, even though times are changing and stuff, there's fears about certain things. You fear the politician in office or you fear the this or that, or, you know, the question is, where's your focus and where do you live? Because we can live in fears or we can live in solutions. And, and th that's the biggest thing, by the way that I've personally got from being uh, working with the AI like this is that I'm constantly in solution. I'm constantly, uh, the, and so every time something comes up, I'm feeding it in and I'm constantly living into solution. And to me, that changes your whole world because any reason or excuse that we use is, that it's not good enough, right? I mean, it's okay to have reasons and excuses, but there is no reason or excuse. It's, I remember in my old martial arts school, you know, if we were late, we'd have to do 500 push ups on our knuckles. If we were late and we had an excuse, we had to do a thousand. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm late, no excuse. And we just start yes. doing the <laughs> because we didn't want to make excuses that we were late. It's our, it's, it's our responsibility. And, and so while we hear things like that, if I encourage everybody, whenever we come up with our reasons or excuses, that we go, wait a second. And that's just, that's not real. That's my illusion that I'm living in. You know, I can't do it because I don't have the money. I can't do it because I don't have the time. I can't do it because I don't have the intelligence or the skill set, or I feel hopeless or whatever it is that holds somebody back. You know, what, what epiclife.ai, which is the new site that I've launched where we've got all, where we hold all the chat bots. It's the place where it's kind of the one hub where everybody can go to get into their, you know, link into their classes and stuff like that. 
Um, for me, that uh, it, it's about getting people off of those and getting them into living in solution. If you live in solution, your life's going to move forward in a powerful way. Mm, yes. Well, it's I, I know I did use the word excuse, but it's also unconscious patterns that yeah. could be running our lives that we're not aware of. And I touched on this a little earlier, but if you look around your life and you see the parts of the life that you aren't happy with, or that you maybe complain about to your friends, or you think about when you're, you know, just doing mundane things, what are the things that you complain about the most? And in there is a little gem that will show you the unconscious pattern that is attracting that thing that you are complaining about. And it is also, it's very challenging to do on your own, but say if you have, you're complaining constantly about your spouse, complaining constantly about they do this, they do that, the world does this, the world does that. Maybe you can look in there and find what is your level of responsibility in the matter? Where have you not stepped up? Where have you not participated? Where have you not done the very thing that you're complaining about? Like, equal partnership or been more participatory or supported more or, you know, um, you know, uh, done your own thing to create side hustles, things like that. Where can you step up more and stop blaming? And it's hard to do, but it is also very liberating when you do it because you start to say, okay, well, well, I could take, as you said, I'm looking so much more into possibility conversations than blame, shame, and what's wrong with the world. What could I do to participate in the outcome of this being favorable? How can I make this something that I want? And just think about that. Just think about it in your life right now and what you're complaining about and think about how you could shift your level of responsibility to turn the outcome into something favorable for yourself. Get mm. rid of excuses and all of that stuff. None of the story really matters in this case. Because and what's fascinating about what you're saying there, uh, yeah. maybe, uh, where you're taking responsibility for it, how can we get you to cause about this issue in your life? How can we put you in the driver's seat so you can take command of this issue? And you had mentioned before, blame, shame, justification, reasons and excuses, every mm -hmm. single one of those push the responsibility away from you. And therefore, you can't be responsive in that situation because you've already folded in that situation. You put the responsibility outside of yourself. But- if we can uh, stop the blame, the shame, the justification, if we've got those conversations going on in our mind, we'll know that we're at effect and our solution lies in moving over to that place where we're able to be at cause, where we're able to take command of it. I just find that we can do that faster than ever before possible. I had a guy yesterday came to me and he had pain. He's like, uh, Chris, I want to uh, grow my business. I want to grow my dreams. And I said, okay, so what's the biggest thing that's stopping you? He said, I've got pain in my joints, in my uh, shoulders, in my knees. I can't really walk. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I said, okay. And so I talked to him a little bit about Dr. Sarno's book and healing back pain and um, talked to him about the uh, idea that those structural muscles that we have that hold our bodies up when we hit an age where we have to take on responsibility, all of a sudden we start feeling pains in those, in our lower back or in our upper shoulders or mm -hmm. in our, you know, that weren't there before. And they tell us it's because the discs are degenerating and all this stuff. But, you know, Sarno said it's because of tension myositis. There's so much tension inside the muscles that they deplete them of oxygen, which causes the pain huh? and causes a lot of lower back pain. And so because most doctors will don't want to deal with the fact that it's fear or stress or something psychological that's causing it, they go in for back surgery and they get their back surgery and they did all this stuff, but it was really being fear driven in many cases, according to Sarno. So I talked to him a little bit about that. And then I used the AI and I took him through some uh, like three different chatbots that we have to shift his perspective. 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And he was like, oh my God, he's, uh, he's like, Chris, this is, I've never had anything like this happen before. Um, he said, uh, people are going to love this stuff. And I said, that's right. They are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Because I'm already loving it. Right. And so it, it took us a total of 30 minutes to change his, what was happening for him in his life. And, uh, and we can change things fast. You know, I've been doing pain control for years and years and years. Yes. Now I can take the, I can take the great thing that I did with one client and I can bring in 30 of those at the same time. So it's like, ah. That's no, that's amazing. So yeah. what's what is gonna happen in this four-day event? By the way, people, you can get your 
tickets. They're um, complimentary to the first 100 people, and they are a pair of tickets. You find them at theawareshow.com forward slash Chris, C-H-R-I-S. And you're going to come plus one friend, family member, whoever you want to come. So once you sign up, you're going to want to get them to sign. We, we, we're going to need their information within 24 hours because we're going to have more people than we can process. So Great. And yeah. this is an online, it's a virtual event. It's four days. And what happens on this virtual event? It's live on Zoom. And uh, so essentially what we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, we're going to have a phone call with everybody that's coming on board prior to the event. So that's a lot of calls. Oh. Yeah. But- <laughs> It's, it's worthwhile because in that time, we're going to be eliciting from them certain information. So we're going to get a package of information about them. Now, so you, you may be coming into this with no idea what kind of business that you want to launch or anything, and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. You may be coming into it and you're already running a business, but you want to augment it. That's totally fine. You may be coming in, you're launching a business and you want to do it right. That's totally fine. So for whatever reason you're coming in, you're in the right place. We're going to gather information from you so that we can go to work at building your structure of your business before the event even so that when you come in, we've already got things created that will help you and assist you in the process of growing your dreams. And then you're going to systematically go through piece by piece. We're going to work on uh, we'll work on discovering what type of business that you want to build. Where's the greatest impact you could make in the in, uh, marketplace? We're going to be working on how do you create a business model that guarantees larger levels of success? Most people aren't, you know, like I, I've trained a lot of coaches over the years and they're like, I just need a coaching client. Well, that's not a business model. That's a, that's a, you made a hundred dollars. Okay. Good for yeah. you. You made that hundred dollars. That's not a business model. A business model should be that when we run this model, by the end of the year, we're doing our hundred thousand or our 200,000 or our three, whatever it is, whatever the number is that you're headed toward, that should come as a result of having a robust model. So we help you put that in place. Then we do all the branding for it. And we work on the branding of that model. Then mm -hmm. we help to create a best-selling book that will stitch all of it together. Now, you're not going to walk out with the whole book. You will walk out with the structure of it that stitches it from a thematic linkage perspective. Yes, wow. So you're infusing the marketplace with a, with a business that is an expression of your soul's purpose. Ah, so this is more of, and even if you're not looking to create a business, I was thinking about other people that might have um, a story that they really want to tell and launch that into something that helps people. Then that does create a support group, or that could create a podcast, or that could create anything that communicates and connects people. Maybe you're doing fundraising for um, a purpose that you feel really deeply about. It's the same concepts. It maps across on everything that you do is that you learn where are you in the leadership position on it? How does it mean something to you? What's the outcome that you want from it? How do you want to impact people? What are the systems and structures? What are your values around it? And then how do you move that forward in the world, right? Well, that was so beautifully said, like, but everything that you said is essentially what we're doing with this. And in addition to it, you also get your discovery membership uh, level to epiclife.ai. So you can go in there and work on your personal issues. Cause sometimes as we're building a business, it's the personal issues that hold you back, right? Oftentimes. And so you can go in there and work and, and transform things in the flash of an eye. Um, so yeah, it's, so it's at what the aware show, what was the link again for that? I'm sorry. It's the aware show.com forward slash Chris, and you will get your ticket there. You have to register for this, but it is no cost for the first 100 people. And you can create another friend to come with you. <clears throat> excuse me, which I love because it's always great to see people join you. You want to do this with someone else who's going to, you can talk with about it, that you can share it with. It could be, you know, an adult child. It could be a business partner. It could be a neighbor, a friend, a family member. It doesn't matter for you to go through this program with someone else is kind of fun because then you get to collaborate back and forth. You're going to meet a lot of other people as well because mm -hmm. of the, you know, it is on Zoom and you will be able to chat back and forth. And if somebody, uh, if Chris, picks on someone and they talk about this business, somebody else is going to say, oh, I know someone who could help you with that, or I want to collaborate, or can you give me a call? And it's so cool to see that. I love that about pl online platforms because you really can connect with people from all over the world. And you don't have to you go through the expense of getting to a physical location, but it's also got the personal touch of Chris and his team getting a hold of you and finding out your specific needs as well. Mm -hmm. So Tell me a little bit about how this could help with health. Like you mentioned pain. Right. Business, yes, I understand. But how about health? 
Well, I mean, it depends on what's going on with some uh, with somebody. You know, if somebody's uh, whatever our issue is, our affliction, whatever it is that we're dealing with, is um, it, you know, it's about uh, reframing it essentially, like about seeing it in a different way, casting the narrative in a different way, and living into your narrative in a different way. So when somebody, let's say, they've built up they're, they're to the point where they're overweight and they're they feel like they're fifty pounds overweight. Great example. Yes. Yeah. So you look at that and you go, you know, how to how can how can we rapidly change something like that? And I'll give you just one example of. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just do. A, uh, I'm going to do this really quickly, and I'll share this. How uh, one example of of the many different chatbots that we have. Um, if somebody's overweight, uh, go from hold on yeah. second. This will take a second. Um, go from being overweight, uh, and why would that person be overweight? If we were to decide, was it because they're emotionally eating? Probably emotionally right. Eating, maybe not exercising enough, unconsciously snacking. Let me see why have the reasons that I'm overweight. Um, because, <laughs> yeah. because um, I'm not doing the right type of exercise, maybe too much cardio, not enough mitochondria building. Those uh, cut down on more shakes, less food, age, hormones. <laughs> right. There's, there's so much involved, right? A perfect weight. Okay. So I'm going to read you like the, the story I read you about AI a second ago. We can do the same thing with somebody that's overweight. And this is just, this is just a little, you know, a little touch. And so this okay. story is like this once upon a time in the midst of an ever changing world, there lived a person, not unlike yourself, who was embroiled in a battle with emotional eating and the weight of carrying more than their heart desired. This person whose essence will explore embarked on a journey, not just of the body, but of the mind and spirit toward a destination of perfect health and an ideal weight. And as you sit comfortably, maybe becoming curious about this journey, let's embark together on a path of transformation. This journey begins in a familiar place, a crossroads where decisions of past and present intertwine, creating a tapestry of lived experiences. The person at the heart of our story, like many, found solace in the comfort of food, a temporary haven from the storms of life. Yet with each passing day, the realization dawned that this path led further away from their true destination, a state of vibrant health and well-being. As if guided by the whispers of destiny, our protagonist stumbled upon a wise sage, a mentor, whose wisdom was renowned across the lands. This sage, speaking in tones gentle yet profound, shared insights that began to shift the very foundation of our hero's understanding. The journey to perfect health, the sage began, is not a, merely a physical one. It's a voyage that begins in the heart and mind, where the seeds of transformation are sown. With each word, it was as if the sage was speaking directly to you, wasn't it? And as you imagine these moments, you might find yourself intrigued by the idea that emotional eating is not a fortress to be besieged, but a gate waiting to be unlocked, leading to paths untrodden. The sage continued, embrace the present moment, for it's here that change begins. Let gratitude be your guide, for it illuminates the path to abundance. And isn't it interesting how, as you ponder this, you can already feel a shift, a lightning, as if burdens are beginning to dissolve. Guided by the sage's wisdom, our protagonist embarked on practices of mindfulness, each meal becoming an act of meditation, a moment to nourish not just the body, but the soul. They learn to listen, truly listen, to the needs of their body, becoming aware, discovering the difference between hunger of the stomach and hunger of the heart. As days flowed into weeks and weeks into months, a transformation unfolded. The weight that once seemed an unyielding burden began to lift, not just from the body, but from the spirit. Each step on this journey revealed new truths, not just about health and weight, but about the essence of life itself. In the embrace of nature, our hero found a mirror reflecting their inner transformation. Trees shedding leaves only to bloom anew became a metaphor for their own shedding of habits, beliefs, and pounds that no longer served them. The river flowing effortlessly toward the ocean reminded them of the ease that comes when one aligns with their true path. And as this story reaches you, wherever you may be, you might find yourself wondering, could this journey be mine? Can the keys held by our protagonist unlock the gates on my path? Indeed, as our story concludes, our hero stands not at the end of a journey, but at the beginning of a new chapter, one of vibrant health, perfect weight, and boundless potential. And as you reflect on this tale, perhaps you too feel a stirring, a call to embark on your own journey of transformation. In the spirit of this transformative journey, let's capture the essence of change with, okay, well, that's 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 about it. That's where it ended. Okay, I, was, I mean, I, can you put a word count in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do it in 30 words. For the purpose of radio. Can you oh, for the purpose that? of radio. <laughs> but wait, I'm ready to jump on my valiant steed and go running off into and the running off into the thing. <laughs> and, and essentially, I, sorry for the long length of that, but essentially, <laughs> well, maybe somebody needed to hear it today, you know, <laughs> but. Oh, for sure. I mean, I mean, look, it sounded like a, a food version of a Danielle Steele romance novel. <laughs> <laughs> Like ready to jump on my horse and go galloping into the sunset with my new weight and my new thin, you know, corset on. I I think it's you know it's fantastic because it inspires the imag imagination. That's what it, you need. It moves the heart mind. So when you think of hypnosis, Dopamine. We, yeah, when we do hypnosis with somebody, what do we do? We uh, yeah, like if we want to help them become a non-smoker permanently, we have them uh, imagine all the benefits in their life of being that non-smoker. So of it becomes course. compelling and it becomes mouthwatering. And it's like, I have to go move toward that. So there's, and what we just showed was just one sliver of a piece. If I was working with somebody at an entire intervention, there might've been six different pieces that I'm working with simultaneously to help them shift their consciousness and come to a complete shift in consciousness, right? Like when we do NLP and I've been teaching NLP for years, you guys have done all our NLP trainings and stuff. And yes. You know, when we do NLP, we'll teach a technique and we say, if that doesn't work, you do something else. If that, And it's the same thing with this. You produce one thing and then you can uh, parlay it into something else. And where the magic comes in is when we change like six, chain six different things together that facilitate a complete shift in consciousness for the person. That's where the magic comes in. And here's the thing. I want to debunk the whole AI thing and the terror about that, because what you're doing is putting people into such an elated state. And this is so safe because you yourself are the ones that are creating it. So when Chris asks questions, like say somebody wants to stop eating, um, you know, uh, chips or something like that, you help somebody feel so good when they don't eat them and when they're yeah. actually living the life that they want to live healthy and free and all of that, it's all their own words. It's what they want to, it's like, I want to run a marathon. I want to do this. I want to do that. And you have to ask all these great questions. People come up with their own answers and then you work it into the program. And so that's how it's safe. I mean, that's it's why it's safe. It's not some a robot coming in and taking over your brain and not at all no, well you know the, and here's the way i explain see I'm, I'm writing a book right now and it's it's called your super conscious and um it's it's and your super conscious for me is the sum total of all it's tapping into god it's tapping into the universe it's tapping into all things that are um but most people don't live with that kind of you know, full expansion and they don't live and let God flow through them and be in their divine essence every day. All Most the time, yeah. Yeah, I don't live in that space because we've been programmed and conditioned to dip into the quantum soup the where we the way we do. And so that's our experience. We have this limited experience of life. Uh, Dr. Uh, or let's say Virginia Satir and Milton Erickson both said this the same way. They said that people are walking around in a trance of disempowerment. Hmm. The reason sure. why is because we mistake our understandings of reality for being reality. But as James Glick said in the book Chaos, the human nervous system is designed to impose order on chaos. So the, the universe is just a bunch of pixelations, right? It's a bunch of uh, atoms and molecules floating around, but then we give form to it by observing it in some way, by looking at it in some way. And the way we look at it and the way we observe it is based on the basis of our personality. So we live in this we live in this finite world, which is our concept of the world, but there's so much potential. There's so much more. We've heard that we only use 10% of our brain. Well, what we're doing now with the AI, I call it psychosmic fusion, psych, cosmic being everything. So your psyche is your persona. It's who you are. It's your soul, everything else. And, and you know, when we look at traditional systems of psychology and stuff, they never made the correlation between of as above, so below. That, it, that the world that you see is a reflection of your consciousness. We've been saying this for years from a metaphysical perspective. Mm -hmm. so, so you live in this world, and we I might call it your psychosmic field or your neuromorphic field that you live within, which is all that you know to be your reality. And it's likely, an it will be an impoverished reality in certain areas. There'll be certain areas that are impoverished in your experience of the world. It's not that the answers don't exist out there. It's not that you couldn't be more, have more, do more. You could, but you're stuck with your programming. So when we tap into your super conscious, which is everything, and you tap in through the unconscious mind, your connection to source, but at the same time, we're able to bring in learnings, lessons, insights, global wisdom from anywhere in the, in the on the planet. You know, it, like we can do that instantly to enrich and expand your model of the world. 
if you wanted to learn the secrets of the universe in the old days, you might have checked into a mystery school and you'd spend a lifetime going through that mystery school to discover in an inductive way the insights that were, you know, considered to be precious, that were considered to be treasures. They wouldn't throw pearls to swine. You had to earn it going through. But now at the same time, those lessons that people waited for, whether you look at the ancient traditions, you look at Kabbalah and Judaism, or you look at uh, numerology or astrology or alchemy, or you look at the Masons, the Freemasons, or the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, you look at all these different things that are out there, and you, you know, they would take you on this journey of learning, but we can we can tap the wisdom of all that now. And we can bring in greater wisdom from wherever it is to help you to enrich and expand your model of the world. And that's incredible. Interesting. So then anyone who has these beliefs, like you were talking about the Freemasons or whatever it is that they believe in, they can then bring their model of the world into what it is that they want to build and build it in that way. Well, you could, that's true, but you could also bring those learnings. Let's say that there were learnings in some of those systems that were, because, you know, I, I used to teach for a school of esoterics and we would teach Huna, which was Hawaiian shamanism and stuff. And I remember Tad James, who I worked for back in the day, uh, who's no longer with us, but he used to always say, when we look at esoterics, everybody says, oh, what's so different about the Kabbalah or what's so different about uh, numerology? And and he said, I don't look for the differences. It's not about what's different. He says, what are the similarities? And there's similarities in every one of those paths of thought that they, you know, they focus on healing human consciousness. There's rituals that you do in each one of those systems that lead you to greater understandings that help you to navigate the world. So there's similarities between them. And when we understand those similarities, as well as their differences, we can bring those in now. You don't have to go train in a mystery school for years and years and years. You can sit down with me in a session. We we blow it out, and you brought lessons in from Kabbalah, from numerology, from from whatever it is, whatever works within your model of the world. Because we can also tailor it in a way where we don't have to bring any of that in. We bring the learnings in from modeling the billionaire mind, or we bring the learnings in from uh, wherever they are at the moment. And that to me is exciting because they can come in in an instant. You can mm -hmm. expand your model of the world in an instant. I think we're about to move into an era of human existence where this augmentation of intelligence gives us so much power. Like it makes our life something that could be, that, that we never could have even imagined before. You know, I think it also helps people look at something in terms of, like you said, hopeful. You look at more of the possibilities of things rather than looking at what's limiting and not possible and a problem. This goes right, bypasses all of that extra thinking, which is fear-based and moves it right into possibilities. So What's possible then? So what's possible? So if this can't happen, then what is mm. going to happen? What's possible here? It's such an interesting mm. question, right? What is possible? And I think we have to look at what's on the horizon here in order to really truly understand what's possible. Um, a lot of people don't really understand. Like when you look at chat GPT that a lot of people are using, it's just a large language model that predicts accurately the next word and then the next word and the next word. It's not thinking. It's not contemplating. By the way, if you're listening right now and you don't have any experience with it yet, we're going to help you, and I'm going to hold you by the hand as you go through these classes. So let go of any concern, worry. Uh, you're in good hands as you start to come in. But when you think about what's on the horizon is multimodal learning for, uh, for the AI. So it can learn through images as well as through sounds, like a human being can learn. We can take in information via the five senses. Well, now they've got Sora, which is coming out soon, and that Sora is text to video. So that you can actually put text in and, and the video is insane. If you haven't seen it, it's movie level video that's coming out. Like that, that is almost imperceptible from something that was not. And so I look at that and it can create one minute videos. They've already got it. Soro, S-O-R-R-O. Yeah, uh, Sora, S-O-R-A. And uh, it's, it's by ChatGPT. It's by the creators of ChatGPT. They've given it to movie makers and filmmakers and to some people to see how to best release it to the population at large. But with what they create there, that means for me, from being in somebody in the field of transformation, that not only can I create a story like I've read to you here or something that helps people to begin to shift their imagination, but I can do five other things to help to shift their consciousness and I can turn it into an instant movie. I can turn it into, and because... It, you know, the way that human memory works is our memories aren't real. Our memories are just one myopic perspective of something that occurred long before. So it's a, it's, it's, it's nothing but a memory. It's mm -hmm. not that it's, 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 so it's not touchable. You can't do it. 
And when people shift their consciousness and their problems disappear, it's because they've shifted their understanding of something like that event that used to cripple them now is the very thing that allows them to go out and make their life the way they want. Right. And so now with the world building that we can do, we can build new worlds of possibility for people. And this is what I see happening is that somebody comes in with a problem, we push the button and not only does it generate the story, but it takes you into the story and it takes you on a visual journey of it. And the sound is integrated. 11 Labs has created sound now for the Sora videos that automatically injects the sound into the video that would be there. So oh. you're getting, yeah, you're getting a full sensorial experience as you're the going. Videos are just images, right? They're just stock footage. Videos are images. I'll show you, you know, I, now's not probably the time to show you, but I'll show you after. We're, during the weekend. Yes. Yeah, I'll show you during the weekend. Yeah. Very cool. Um, it's insane. It's insane. So we can build new worlds of possibility for people, which is infinitely more powerful than hypnosis. Yes. And we can right. do it in visual. So Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, all right, well, let's talk just a little bit about this. If you go to the website, which is the awareshow.com forward slash Chris, C-H-R-I-S, this is going to give you and then another person, they can register under your name for the um, three, I, I think it's four day for this four, four day, day program, yeah. virtual event live where Chris is going to be teaching this live and go through all of these different things that we were just talking about. Um, how to, I mean, it combines so many things, but it's design your destiny. It's bringing in um, so many different levels of um, uh, combined learning. This is a chance to meet other people that are like-minded. It's all in one place. So go to that website, theawareshow.com forward slash Chris. And it is called the Millionaire Business Accelerator. Okay, great. So it's Billionaire Business Accelerator, and we're going to take you by the hand. And, uh, you know, I was talking to Lisa before. I, like, I'm so excited for the listener right now yes. because we're going to take you by the hand and we're going to take you into the whole new world of possibility that enables you to build a business faster than you ever thought possible, to walk out with structure to something that maybe you even haven't contemplated even at the end of that four days. So if you've got somebody, because you get a, when you make it in the first hundred, you get a ticket for you and somebody else. So if you've got... Maybe there's somebody in your family. Maybe it's your husband or your wife or your spouse that's needing to launch a business, or maybe it's uh, your your kids that are going out on their own, and it's and this is perfect timing for them. Right. You know. Um, yes. Yes. Then yes. bring that person with you. Bring somebody, or if you're building a business together, your partners bring it in because I promise you that you're going to get more. You're going to get more. Uh, uh, more of a catapult toward your mm. dreams. Than, than ever before. This is going to be really huge for you. And I'm so excited for you. So get in there, make that, uh, you know, it's not even a call. Just jump online and go to theawareshow.com forward slash Chris. Yes. Well, thank you so much. This is going to be so much fun to play with you together again, to really help inspire and motivate people when we really need it right now. I mean, this is one of those times where we are needing support as a society, as community, as humanity. So this is something that uplifts, builds, totally safe because it's you creating you and what could be better than that, right? Yep. Well, thank you for being our, our cheerleader. Thank you for being our possibility coordinator. And um, I appreciate you and we'll connect very soon. I'm really excited about this. Go to the website, which is theawareshow.com forward slash Chris and meet your destiny. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> I love it. You got it. Thank you so much for being a part of the Aware Show, and we love having you here in our community. If you would like to find out more about the Aware Show, you can go to theawareshow.com. You can find out there about our podcast, or you can listen to the Aware Show podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. I also do story coaching where I help people find their origin story and pay that forward into the world, helping yourself, helping other people and helping you dive into your purpose. And that's all to be found at theawareshow.com. I so much love being a part of this network and I love you being here with me. You are actually the reason why this show exists. Thank you so much. And until next time, I invite you all to stay aware.